Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to um, go over some of the diagrams for the urinary system. Uh, this, we only have two diagrams. This won't take too terribly long. Um, I did want to show you kind of where these overall structures are in the body as well. Um, so first, you know, we've already kind of talked about those with the notes, but if you look, your kidneys are kind of in the middle of your back, mid to lower back, um, and you have two of them that sit back here, okay? Um, there's a renal artery and a renal vein, and I'm going to show you kidney up close here in just a second so you can see that. Um, but inside or from the kidney, you have this tube right here that's called the ureter that brings urine from the kidney and it goes to the bladder here. Now this is a female model, so I'm going to take out part of this and show you up close. Okay, so orient this the correct way. Okay, there we go. So this um, right here is the, sorry, I'm going backwards. <laughs> Here's the bladder, and you can see I talked about in the notes that it has a, the, the stretching ability, um, and you can see that by looking at these ridges that you saw in the um, stomach that we talked about before. Here's the bladder and the tube I can't do this backwards. So this is the tube right here that leads from the bladder to the outside of the body. Remember that's called the urethra. And we talked about in the notes how it's very short in females compared to males, um, because in males it's, uh, the urethra is going through the penis. Um, here's the uh, uterus. So um, that's why when as women get more and more pregnant, it's pushing on their bladder and they have to pee all the time. So that kind of gives you an explanation for that. Okay, so I just want to show you that first off um, here. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the first diagram that you have in your Google slide. Let me get that up here. Okay, so here is the kidney structure. And I'm going to show you on the video as we talk about it. So let me get it up here. There we go. So here's the kidney. Um, if we were in class, we would be dissecting one of these. Um, so that's kind of, you got to miss out on that. So sorry about that. But here's your kidney structure if you look at it in detail. Um, this outer covering here, if you look at the outer covering of the kidney, let me show you on this angle here. Um, outer covering here, this is called the capsule, the renal capsule. That is the top right box that you're filling in. This is really hard to do when you're trying to show it on a computer video screen. Okay, renal capsule is a protective layer of connective tissue and that helps prevent injury to the kidney itself. So that outer brown layer is the renal capsule. When you cut it open then, you've got these two main areas. You've got this portion here, this white colored portion, that's called the renal Ca uh, cortex and then all the other stuff in the middle is the renal medulla and we'll look at each individual one in those in, in, in just a second. The top left box is where you put renal cortex. It's the outer layer of kidney that contains the nephrons, Bowman's capsules, and the collecting duct. Okay, remember that each individual unit of a kidney is called a um, nephron and you have millions of these in your kidneys and they are all working together to filter the blood. Um, and so that's where you would find those microscopic parts in the renal cortex. Um, inside here then with all the different pyramids, okay, those are all the renal medullas are the renal pyramids and they're found that whole area is called the renal medulla okay so then the, the uh, square underneath renal cortex is the renal pyramids that make up the medulla or the inner layer of the kidney and this is where the urine is actually formed so the filtering part takes place in the cortex here okay and the urine formation takes place here in the renal pyramids Now branching off from each pyramid, like right here, would be a renal calyx, a minor calyx. Sorry, I'm having talking issues today. The minor calyx, C-A-L-Y-X. Okay, that is this one right here. 
okay? It receives urine from the papilla of the renal pyramids and it passes it to the major calyx. So all of these microscopic nephrons that make all the urine, all the collecting ducts will empty into this minor calyx. And then all each pyramid has its own minor calyx that will join together here to be the, uh, the major calyx. So that's the next box below that one. It receives urine from the minor calyces. Calyces is plural for calyx. And it converges to form the renal pelvis. So the next section here, this is your renal pelvis. Right there, the yellow part. Okay, that's the bottom middle square. Renal pelvis collects urine from all the major calyces. And then as it goes at this point where my finger is here, that's the ureter. Okay, that's the tube that takes all the urine from all these different nephrons that in the kidney and takes it to the bladder. So it carries collected urine from the renal pelvis to the urinary bladder for storage. Okay. So that's the part, those are the parts of the kidney, okay? And if you want to pause it now, if you're not quite done, I'm going to show you the second diagram next. So let me wait for a second if you want to pause it. And here is, let me get rid of that. Okay, here is your second diagram. This is talking about the nephron function of the nephron. So we saw big in the first diagram with the kidney. And so this one shows you each individual microscopic nephron. Remember in the notes, you kind of took a diagram or you filled in a, a quick diagram of this. This gives you a little bit more information about the processes that are happening in your kidneys to make the urine. So I want you to remember that the whole point of of that the kidney is to take all the stuff in the blood that needs to come out of your body and it puts it in the form of urine and that's how you get rid of waste liquid waste is by uh, relieving that urine um, and getting rid of it through from the bladder okay the first process then is called filtration so top left square and this is where fluid from the blood plasma this does not include the proteins and blood cells. You should not have proteins or blood cells in your urine if you do something is wrong. So if they're, you're not sure what's going on and they take a urine test, they'll test for um, proteins. If you have blood in your urine, that's pretty obvious because your urine will be red. That's not a good thing. Unless you've eaten beets, if, you're, if you like to eat beets, just be careful that you're gonna see some of that red color in urine and feces as well. So fluid from the blood plasma minus the proteins and blood cells leaves the blood capillaries through the filtration membrane and that's at the Bowman's capsule. Remember the Bowman's capsule here is, um, is this uh, conglomeration or bundle of capillaries. Um, that's the glomerulus and then the Bowman's capsule is that C-shaped structure Okay, so blood is coming in through the renal artery, is pushed through the capillaries into the Bowman's capsule, and that's where it enters the series of tubules. If you follow the arrow on my computer, um, that's what's going on there. Okay, and so once it goes into that, that filtration process, once it enters into the Bowman's capsule, then it is now in the kidney itself as far as being in the microscopic part of it. Now, some of the stuff you need to keep in your body, um, it's small enough that it has filtered out, you know, with filtration, it's, it's come out. Sorry, this is bugging me. There we go. Okay, so uh, a lot of stuff is small enough to go through that membrane and it enters the kidney tubules, but you actually need it back in your blood. And so before urine is formed, Anything that needs to stay in the body is reabsorbed. So the second process that happens in this part of the tubules is called reabsorption. Most of the water, about 80% of the water that has been pushed through the um, glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule will be reabsorbed. A lot of the nutrients are reabsorbed. It goes back into the blood because you need it in your body. And this part is called the proximal convoluted tubule. Convoluted means it's all twisty and turny. 
Okay, so that's what it looks here. It's proximal, if you remember proximal means closer to the point of origin. So because this tubule is closer to the Bowman's capsule, it's called the proximal convoluted tubule. You see the capillaries are intertwined within the convolution. So that's how it's able to go back into the blood. So just again, as a review, the very first thing that happens, everything that can fit through the membrane gets shoved through. It, it, there, it's not, it's only by size that matters. If, even if your body still needs it, it's going to go through because of the size of the openings in the membrane. There's an activity you can do, um, a lab quest, I'm sorry, a web quest that kind of you manipulate the size of the openings of a dialysis machine, which is basically a kidney for a person whose kidneys aren't working. Um, and you'll see directly how that responds, you know, how that affects the stuff that's in the, in the filtrate. So thing, and then when things get, when the, when the material at this, the liquid is called filtrate at this point, when it gets here, if something needs to get reabsorbed back in the blood, it will happen here. Okay. Then it goes down this loop here. It's called the loop of Henley and different things are exchanged. And then you get into the other twisty turny tubule, but since it's farther away from the glomerulus, it's called the distal proximal, a uh, dix, sorry, distal convoluted tubule. Distal means away from. The part here, this is secretion. At this point, there may be some things that are active, you know, actively removed from the blood. It didn't get removed earlier, but it gets removed later. Um, this could be hydrogen ions, certain drugs that you take, good and bad drugs steroids, different things. Most of the time your um, drugs are typically reabsorbed or secreted from the, from the um, blood at this point. A lot of drugs, too much use of them can damage kidneys and that's why because they're, your kidneys have to work hard you know, to get rid of those. So if you're taking them constantly, then, then that can cause um, damage to the kidneys. This includes glucose. Too much glucose can do this too. <clears throat> Hence, that is why people that have diabetes, uh, if they don't take care of it and control the amount of sugar and the, the getting rid of the sugar in the, in the other parts of the body, then you will have too much sugar here that your kidneys are trying to get rid of. Um, that's your third process. Then the last process that takes place in the collecting duct is urine formation. This is when you actually make urine. Um, it's the fine tuning of potassium and hydrogen in the urine that helps to regulate the levels of the blood. Um, and then from here, the urine will, tra will travel to the renal pelvis and then be eliminated or taken to the bladder. Now, at this point, uh, we haven't really talked about what makes urine dark or really pale. If you have a lot of water in your system already, then you don't need to your body is not at risk for dehydration, so it will get rid of the extra water um, and your urine will be very pale, okay? So if you're drinking a lot of water during the day, you know, you know, you kind of constantly are peeing and that, that urine is not very dark because it has a lot of water, it's dilute, okay? Now, on the other hand, if you're not drinking a lot of water or for some reason you're dehydrated, um, then you, your body is going to try to conserve as much water as possible. So during this process of reabsorption and stuff, not a lot of water will be reabsorbed. It will, it will, I'm see, I said that backwards. A lot of water will be reabsorbed here and you won't have a lot of water getting in the urine. So the urine will be very dark. That's what the difference is um, related to water content. Now, sometimes vitamins can make your urine appear dark or different foods that you eat or you know, even if you have a little bit of blood you're throwing in there. Um, but for the most part, dark and pale urine has to do with the amount of water that's in the urine. Now, if you're outside and it's very, you're hot, you're not drinking water, your body has some hormones that, will, it, it, that will, it will release to make the kidneys reabsorb the water to keep it in your body. So you don't, if you pee all the water out, then you can have major problems happening. And the opposite is true. If you have a lot of water and you need to pee out more of it, then your body will release a hormone to tell your kidneys, hey, don't reabsorb this water. We got to pee it out. We got plenty here. Okay. That's kind of what messages it's sending. All right. So these are just the four different processes that are happening. Filtration, then reabsorption, secretion, and then your information. So that is the end of the video um, for the diagrams. So fill these out and click the turn in button to get credit for those. See you later.